Arsenal fans who've marched down the Seven Sisters Road to take their places in this all-ticket crowd for what's really a Cockney Cup final at Christmas. And now we await the welcome for their oldest and fiercest rivals from just across North London, the home side today, Tottenham Hotspur. The Spurs fans pleased that this rivalry exists again after a two-year gap, and they've just heard, in fact, this afternoon's team news. One change in the Tottenham team from the side that played last week at Manchester United, and it's at number two. Don McAllister has been taken ill, so the experienced Terry Naylor returns in that position. There's also a change at substitute, where Chris Jones takes over from Ricky Villa. The Arsenal side is unchanged, and on that caption, four former Tottenham men. The manager, Terry Neal, was boss of Spurs until 1976. At number six, Willie Young used to be a Tottenham player, as indeed did the left-back, number three, Steve Walford. And the first name on the caption, perhaps the most famous former Tottenham player of all, the Arsenal goalkeeper Pat Jennings, who in a 13-year association here at White Hart Lane played 472 league games for Spurs and won winner's medals in three separate cup competitions. Trevor Spencer from Salisbury is the referee and the pitch is soft enough to take a stud. The 83rd league meeting between these old rivals is underway. Spurs with Ardiles on the ball there are playing from right to left in the first half. Arsenal in their familiar colours of red shirts with white sleeves. This is Gorman for Tottenham. Back heel from John Pratt to Peter Taylor. Here's Pratt again. That was Willie Young. Ardiles. Oh, and the back pass by Pratt is caught, Lacey and Sunderland's in there, and it's in! Sunderland for Arsenal, and the first minute, disaster for Spurs. It was a back pass by John Pratt, and it caught John Lacey completely cold. Sunderland stole in, shot low, Kendall got a foot to it, but the ball ricocheted high in the net, and Arsenal in front, inside the first minute. Waiting in the centre, Colin Lee and Glenn Hoddle. That was Hoddle. This is Pratt. But Tottenham know only too well, it takes a very good shot indeed to beat Pat Jennings. Stapleton for Arsenal, looking for Price. John Pratt getting back. Max Spurs have had more of the play the last ten minutes or so, but there's still a goal behind. Ricks. In the way, Perryman, here he is. but he didn't quite have the composure. He tried to shoot when Peter Taylor wanted the ball pulled back when Spurs might well have scored. And the Arsenal bench still with the goal lead. Sunderland to Rice. Price now. Rice is in the centre with Stapleton. This is Sunderland. Doing some holding surely there on Lee. And the feet went in as well. The linesman was very well placed to get in there, which he did. Sunderland held Lee round the waist initially, and Lee got angry. Sunderland was at fault initially, but Lee reacted out of order. And the referee speaks first to Lee. But not apparently to Sunderland. Maybe the linesman's dealt with that, I'm not too sure. Certainly there was some holding initially, which uh, caused Lee to lose his temper. Ardiles. 
foul. He took it while the ball was moving and he's protested to the referee. <laughs> he, he can speak now enough English, Ardiles, to make his point, and he certainly did there. <laughs> this is Naylor for Spurs. Taylor. Hoddle. Lee. Was that handball by Brady? Well, two appeals are waved away. This is Gorman. And Lacey and Sunderland colliding. And Ardiles is going to get booked, I think. Ardiles has argued again with the referee for the second time. And the referee went to his pocket there immediately. But I think, because it's calmed down a bit since, he's going to let Ardiles get away with it. He'll certainly be spoken to again. Initially, he went for his book there, the referee, but I think he's giving the little Argentine the benefit of the doubt. John Pratt calming things down as well. But what's gone on, in fact, in these last few seconds is that Tottenham feel there could have been a handball against Brady in the Arsenal penalty area. Very hard to see from here. He had his back to us. But a couple of Tottenham players who were nearest to him did hopefully put their arms up. Hoddle. That was Brady's pass and a beauty it was too to Sunderland. Stapleton on the far post. Sunderland shots. Oh, it's in! He scored again. Again, the keeper touched it, but it went in. And Sunderland is making this now a personal performance. 38 minutes gone and Arsenal are two goals up. It looked harmless at first. Sunderland drifted inside, he let one go. Kendall touched it once again, but the ball once more flew off him into the net. And Arsenal now, having done plenty of good defending, have a two-goal lead. challenge but when he went into Gatting there it looked to be over the ball meantime the police over in that corner have uh, calmed the rival fans to a degree and are leading one or two of them out in fact Perryman is still getting the warning from the referee about the challenge goes the whistle for half-time and very much Arsenal's half as far as the score is concerned I always remember Alan Sunderland when he was at Wolves playing in several positions but Bill McGarry always used to say that his best position was up front because his finishing was so clinical and indeed this afternoon he had two chances and he put them both away in the first half to give Tottenham an awful lot to do when they come out to face the Arsenal and their supporters after the break Well, that's a journey Pat Jennings has made so many times before down to the Paxton Road goal at White Hart Lane. A good reception for him and the gloves he's carrying there, especially presented to him, I gather, by the Red Star goalkeeper from Yugoslavia, Stojanovic, have a special rubber facing on the front which allows the ball to stick and allows the goalkeeper to grip the ball more easily. So Jennings puts those gloves on at the start of the second half and Arsenal are playing now from the right and he gets a very early touch. by Sunderland there's John Gorman it's a cold afternoon but the mist which was evident in London this morning cleared before the kickoff David Price for Arsenal Stapleton Price again Price's cross, 
Owen Kendall made a mistake there. He neither caught it nor punched it convincingly, and it rebounded back off Stapleton and then off him again for a corner. Young goalkeeper, only 20 years old, not looking perhaps as happy as he might be. O'Leary, Young. Oh, and against the bar, in again, no! Sunderland thought it was in again. Well, he can't believe that. It was a hat trick on there, and it, it clipped the woodwork and stayed out. But again, Kendall looked uncertain. And Spurs, two down, can't afford another slip. Arsenal seemed that little bit more positive near the penalty area. This is Brady again. Just caught Stapleton's heel, his Ricks. And Brady again. That's round Naylor. Oh, it's been set up for Ricks here. He's gone all the way. And Price it was. And Kendall saved brilliantly there. Well, what a save. Price thought it was in. And I must say, I did too. It was pulled back by Ricks, and Price seemed to have the whole goal there. And Kendall got across. Ricks now for us. Brady. Liam Brady, whose form this season has been interesting because he's possibly a yard quicker, or certainly that bit sharper off the mark, than he was a year ago. He went past a player there on the left-hand side. Ardiles. Made room nicely there to Hoddle. Steve Perryman's pushed well forward in this attack. But Hoddle couldn't get round his man. Here's Ardiles, and he can't either. Ricks for Arsenal. Oh, that was beautifully done between Ricks and Brady. And Brady now has got Stapleton and Sunderland in the centre. Still Brady, beautifully done. Stapleton! 3-0 to Arsenal, and a brilliant goal. Brilliant, not just the way it was taken, which was comfortable enough for Stapleton number nine, but brilliantly executed, because Ricks number 11, in his own half, played a perfect ball to Brady. It took three Tottenham players out the game, and Brady took it on from there. He teased and taunted the defence, took on two of them, went round the back, made room for that lovely cross, and Stapleton said, thank you very much, and Arsenal here are totally and absolutely in charge. Kendall had no chance with that, and the score now is 3-0. Spurs running the risk now of being demoralised. And it's the Arsenal fans who start to sing the Christmas songs. Well, they talk about build-ups from your own half. There was the classic example by us. Very rewarding goal, I would imagine. And it's a free kick now to Spurs. London derbies between the bitter rivals. Nobody likes to be on the wrong end of a big scoreline. Spurs might be now. O'Leary. Oh, and brilliant play by Ardiles until Young got there. takes over the stage. And tries something even from that distance that many players wouldn't want to do in case it looks silly. I think Tottenham have got to play their last card now and bring on Chris Jones, a new attacker, because they're three goals down, and it's looking a desperate position for them. Stapleton, who's just scored the third goal, out to Rice. Price. 
Sunderland. Every Arsenal player wants the ball. Three waiting again for the cross from Price. Stapleton. Oh, Pat Rice in there. Oh, Brady won it beautifully. Look at that! Oh, look at that! What a goal by Brady! Oh, a marvellous goal! Designed for the big occasion and taken with all the aplomb of a great player. 65 minutes gone and Arsenal make it four. Brady, having said that, made it look easy. Picture tells the story. The Tottenham fans are the people he was looking at then. And the message is clear. Number four for Arsenal is Brady on the championship of Spurs, Chris Jones. Spurs have brought Chris Jones on. But the score says it all. Looks to me as though John Pratt has gone off and been replaced by Jones. Well, if the Arsenal fans wanted a goal specially designed for Christmas, that had to be the one. A spectacular present from Brady. So, 15 minutes to go in the North London derby, Tottenham nil, Arsenal 4, and the sad face of Keith Birkinshaw, the Tottenham manager, on the back row of the director's box. Here's Ricks for Arsenal. Here comes Hoddle. Could play it in early to Jones on the far side. Hoddle quite capable of the unexpected, but Jennings always likely to be equal to it. Stapleton. Away by Lacey. Perryman finds Ardiles, three Tottenham players ahead of him, but five defenders back. Taylor. Now it's Naylor. Bounce, almost beating Lacey, but he found Hoddle, and Lee is onside. Jones in the centre. Taylor joining him now, and two more coming from the back. Away by Walford to Naylor. Tottenham, as we thought last week at Manchester United, still needing somebody in the penalty area who looks like scoring goals. On by Stapleton to Sunderland. Is this a hat-trick now? It is. season. Stapleton did so against Ipswich. Today it's Sunderland's turn. No wonder the congratulations come from every Arsenal player because he really has put those chances away so emphatically. On the left foot, slightly wide but drilling it into the far corner. And now Spurs who thought they'd seen the worst this season when they let in four in the opening game to Aston Villa. Here at White Hart Lane that was. They let in five to Arsenal. Mark Kendall beaten five times. And a painful reminder to Tottenham as well of the seven goals they let in at Liverpool early season. Defence just cut apart. And a free kick now to Arsenal.
Spurs absolutely overwhelmed and given a real lesson in how to take chances by Arsenal and how to make them too. Here's Taylor. Anything Tottenham can do now would be pure consolation. What a satisfying way to start the Christmas programme for Arsenal. Don Howe appears to have his head in his hands, but I'm sure he's happier than he looks. Here's Hoddle for Tottenham. But now it's Brady. Arsenal just staying on side here, still Brady. Oh, and he's put Stapleton through. Hit the woodwork. Well, that could have been six. Again, <laughs> the ball was so purposefully delivered by Brady right at the key moment to keep Stapleton on side, but still put him through. And as he beat Kendall, his shot was too high and he clipped the framework of the goal. Perryman. Ardiles. and Spurs on the wrong end of a scoreline in a local derby which is most unusual quite the most one-sided game on the score sheet that has been between these two North London rivals for many years and Arsenal proving that their championship challenge is a genuine one by making and taking five good goals Sunderland got three of them number eight Stapleton was also on the score sheet Brady masterminded the whole business in the second half and scored perhaps the best goal himself. And Arsenal go into the Christmas programme now with a very emphatic record behind them. Ten games unbeaten in the league and a 5-0 win here against their oldest and most bitter rivals in North London. Well, if we can start with the man deservedly holding the match ball, uh, Alan Sunderland. I think it was only your second hat-trick in uh, first-class football, wasn't it, Alan? Yeah, uh, I scored, uh, scored one a couple of years ago in the second division with Wolves when we won promotion and that, but... Uh, I enjoyed this one a bit better, I think. I was going to say, a Yorkshireman in a London derby, that has to be something a bit special, yeah. doesn't it? Well, before the game, like, everybody's getting a bit worked up, you know, the lads, there's a bit of rivalry, like, and I thought, what's it all about? But then when you get out there, you know, you can't help getting tied up, in it? Didn't take you long to find out what it was all about, because I think we timed the first <laughs> goal at about uh, 40 seconds. Yeah, well, I think they said out loud speak about 38, but that helped me settle down a bit quicker. Which of the three goals pleased you most? The last one. <laughs> on by Stapleton to Sunderland. Is this a hat-trick now? It is. Just going back to the goal that you made for Frank Stapleton, there was a very good piece of play by uh, Graham Ricks, wasn't there, prior to you getting the ball, I think? Yeah, well, he, he seen me out of the corner of, the eye, uh, of his eye making a run down the left, and uh, he just knocked it in there, and I took Lacey on, and uh, Frank hangs about on that far post, and I found him and took it well. Still Brady, beautifully done. Stapleton! You both come from outside the London area, obviously. How are you spending Christmas? Uh, well, I've got my parents down. My mother and father come down. They stay in over Christmas, so I'll be going out for a meal tonight and probably a bottle of champagne or something. Liam? Yeah, I think I'll have mine with a bottle of champagne as well. 